He's in Zoom. That's why. You got a nice voice. Oh, thank you. It's pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> says we're live. All right, gentlemen, we are live. We are live on Facebook. Hey, what's up, everybody? Oh, and welcome yeah. to another episode of Police Off the Cuff After Hours. My name is Mark DeMeo. I'm with my co-host, my partner in all things law enforcement, the very handsome wow. Bill Canham. I love that introduction. You, who did your hair today? I got a haircut, actually. Holy shit. Were you the wearing Dominican. a mask? Did His name is a AJ. AJ, yeah, he does a nice job. Did you wear a mask when you were getting your haircut or what? Yeah, of course, man. I always follow the laws. Yeah. Well, well, apparently Nancy Pelosi doesn't follow the laws too. So you know. yeah, that was great. Sure that. that was sure great. That. It was a setup. It was a setup. Hey, yeah. Uh, <laughs> why don't Why don't we introduce our guests so we could just jump in? Uh, Bill, you do the honors, man. Okay. Uh, our guest today is retired detective, private investigator now, Jason Cohen, and the, the, the one of the big reasons we have him on the show is he has a um, a private. Uh, 501 C4 nonprofit that he helps out cops. Uh, he aligns himself with the other organization, Blue Lives Matter, and they're doing a lot of great things for the police in this city. Jason Cohen, welcome to the show. Great to meet you. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. Hey, thanks for coming on, man. Just so you know, Bill's full of shit, okay? <laughs> there's, another, there's another Jason Cohen, and he, he's part owner of Stand Up New York. Uh, we're both yeah, that's what we thought. We, we do, but, thought, we Bill thought he was gonna pull, yeah, Bill thought he was gonna parlay this into steady spots and stand up. He was all <laughs> pumped up, it was all spiked. <laughs> then he sends me this email that says, uh, hey, just so you know, there was a little confusion. This isn't the guy who owns stand up. Oh, yeah, but no, we're, 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 listen, we're, at least you're not a real estate salesman, you know, or right. you call or a used car salesman, you know. Wait, hey, right. uh, where are you from, Jason? So I'm from Brooklyn. Born and raised Brooklyn, New York. Uh, went to South Shore High School. Went to Brooklyn College. John Jay for my master's degree. Going back to finish my master's degree in, in investigative psychology in September. So hopefully oh, all is well. Congratulations. He's Thank a you. real educated former detective. You know. How old are you? You look young. So I've been thirty for the past twelve years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you look young. That yeah. Everybody says that. That's great. Well, you though, got yeah. you got three quarters, right? So you didn't do. You did eighteen years. I did 18 and a half. Yeah, I was. A, wow. a, it was a bad car accident, line of duty. Uh, we were doing undercover B and B, um, and when I was in Brooklyn North Narcotics, and uh, one of the perps that we got, he just sold heroin to the undercover, so he gave us a tussle. You know, she was struggling with him. Everything was well with that, obviously, and then we threw him in the back of the the unmarked uh, car that we had. We were heading back to the seven nine precinct, and uh, we had the green light. And I see out of the corner of my right eye, I said, oh, shit. <laughs> I, a, a van just plowed through the red light and just oh, like Lord. literally like 50 miles an hour just plowed into us. I was in the passenger seat. I saw it coming, so I braced for impact, obviously. And it hit the driver's I, side or the passenger side? No, on, the, on my side, on the passenger side. Oh, wow. Because we were going this way. The car came this way. Boom. Wow. What kind of and injuries did you get? So I, so I suffered, um, uh, there was a tear in my annulus. I don't know if people know about that. It's, uh, hey, we're, we're a family show. We don't talk. <laughs> <laughs> I, I used to have an annulus. I used to have an annulus. Yeah. Uranus, Uranus. Yeah. Um, That's what it sounds like. So no, it's, so it's like, it's like a little uh, squishy thing in between your discs. That, that oh, yeah, cushion yeah, yeah. It. When there's a cut in it, it's almost like cutting a tomato. All the liquid comes out. You can't repair that. So they had her go in and basically cut me open from the front, like an eight-hour surgery um, at at NYU, uh, the hospital for joint joint um, hospital for joint joint disease in Manhattan, and uh, they had to put an artificial titanium disc with bone graft to my L5 S1, and it fuses to your spine, and then they screw it in the front and the back. Are we so, live to NYU Medical School? <laughs> <laughs> hey, so. Uh, let me ask you a question, Jason. How much are you squatting now? Uh, well, yeah. So I'm I'm almost like an X Man. And actually, when I had the surgery, I, I I was asking them if they could put those adamantium blades in my in my, uh, my hands, like, like Wolverine. 
They said, no, sorry, it doesn't does it, exist. Does it feel different? I mean, with the having that in your back? No, it really doesn't. Like when I go through the through the metal detector in the airport or not, nothing doesn't beep because it's it's titanium. But it doesn't you don't you don't realize it's back there. It doesn't you hurt. You don't realize it's back there, but it took like it took over a year of post op physical therapy just to get back. Like after my surgery, I was in the hospital for like a week and I'm using a walker. And I'm like thirty six years old. I'm like, what's going on here? You know? Thirty seven years is crazy. But I got I got, a, I got a new I got a new hip like a year and a half ago. Oh wow. It's not as big as what happened to you, but I'm a lot older than you too. <laughs> Age, age, is in, age is in the mind, right? Yeah, I, that's fucking bullshit. And, and, and how long pain as you get older? <laughs> how long? Do, that thing. How long is that thing supposed to last? Oh, it's supposed to last forever. I mean, it doesn't right, go. Good. It doesn't go away. But only when it gets cold out. That's when you start. You know how people with uh, surgeries and bad backs and knees. You know when it's cold out or when you when it's going to rain or snow, you feel it. Like you feel it tingling a little bit in your muscles and stuff. It tenses up. Like you stuck your tongue on a pole. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, how was How was so your, your last? How many years you worked for the chief of detectives? Um, so I, it, when I was in OCCB after my accident, that was the first time I, I ever had desk duty. Obviously, I was always an outside guy. I always did cases, and you know, had the with the confidential informants and the undercovers and search warrants. Um, so 2000 after my surgery, 2014, they put me on on desk duty, then they transferred me to OCCB, the FOD at one at one police plaza on the 12th floor. Right. And then OCCB merged with uh, with the chief of, with the with detectives bureau. So they moved me upstairs to the chief of D's and I was working with Chief Boyce. I worked with um, with uh, uh, John Russo, Lieutenant Russo. Great guy. And, you, know what we say, you know what we say about guys who work with chiefs? We say their balls are dipped in butter. <laughs> oh, but that's the thing. Uh, John Russo, Lieutenant Russo, he ran the show. He did everything. I remember that my one of my last cases was was Katrina Vetrano. You know, she was murdered in Howard Beach. She, yes. was, a, yeah. she was a jogger. Yeah. And I came in that day, my suit, I didn't even have a chance to sign in. And Lieutenant Russo's like running around the office like a chicken without a head. And he's like, We need to find, we need to search the 250s, we need to search this. We need to we need to look at the at the OLBS and I'm like I don't even know what the hell's going on. Right. So and then he told me about that and I know he was friends with with Katrina's father who was a retired um FDNY. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he was a, a captain or something with FDNY. Yeah. But he they were in Howard Beach and yeah, so John uh, John and his crew, John Russo ended up cracking the case with that with that guy Chantel uh, Lewis. He was a uh, holdover from Pulaski too, right? Who's that? The lieutenant. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I was only there for maybe six months. Yeah. What year was this? This was 2016 when uh, OCCB merged with the Detective Bureau. Oh, wow. I didn't even know that happened. Yeah. I was <laughs> <laughs> Where have you been? I got out in 2000. Did you even know the housing, housing merged? Housing and transit merged with PD? That's right. Because <laughs> I was a housing cop. I was in PSA 5 and PSA 2. You know all those mergers. Everyone wanted those mergers except for guys in in uh, housing and transit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it was the best kept secret. That's why yeah, exactly. everybody said, "Kid, you have no idea what this job was before when I came on '98. You have no idea." I'm like, "No, I really don't. That's why I'm asking you." <laughs> like, yeah. but now it's getting horrible. Now all these guys are leaving. They're all retiring because of what's going on with this. Well, you know, this is this is uh, the one of the, usually one of the deadliest weekends of the year. And Juve. tonight Juve. would be no, actually, what night? Saturday night would be Juve. Is that Juve, right? Ju Juve is Saturday night. So my friends, is, is, is the pop up party. That's the pop up. Right, they're gonna. And then Sunday's the parade, right? Juve. I never studied. Uh, I studied Spanish. I, I yeah. That either. Sac passe. Uh, <laughs> Sac passe. Na naboule. That means hello. How are you? I'm good. Yeah, well, Juve is that's mostly that's like Haitians and people from the island. You know, you know, what's funny about this West weekend Indian. is. Um, no matter where you work or what you're doing, like depending on your seniority, as if you as soon as you get up to the picks, the first thing, you, what week do you pick? You pick this you, week, so you don't you have to. Pick <laughs> no one's getting off this no, week. No, yet. nobody's getting off. I don't. I don't even they're know. Even, they're I mean, not even having it though, right? They can't have yeah, it. Yeah, but they're gonna have it anyway. They're gonna have it anyway. They're gonna have it anyway. It's just the freaking just VMAs saying. went on. The freaking VMAs went on, right? But yet, yeah. yet, yet they wanted to cancel the 9/11 tribute. 
Right, 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 exactly. Are you serious? Like, the hypocrisy is killing me right now. Yeah. And that's why, I, like Bill mentioned before, our organization that I created, that, that we co-founded with, with my partner, Tatiana Davidoff, um, she couldn't be here tonight. Um, but th that's what we want. We want to really focus on backing the blue. Um, we what, wanna... business, what business is your partner? Then? So she, she actually, uh, she helps uh, manage uh, uh, her boss's law firm. So okay. she's like a business consultant in management. So she pretty much runs the law firm. Um, she's got good organizational skills, right? Yeah, yeah, she's very good. Without her, I don't think uh, half the stuff could have been accomplished because that's she started what, the that's, Facebook that's group. That's what our problem here is on police officers. What's the name of the? Um, what's the name of the? It's a nonprofit, right? Yeah. So we so we just became a nonprofit uh, a month ago. Standing up for NYC Incorporated. And um, so, the mission statement is basically to help out um, law enforcement in in a, in crisis. So it's basically, so basically there's other organizations like Blue Lives Matter, Law Enforcement Officers Weekend, they have specific goals, but they're also the 501c3. We're becoming a 501c4, which is a social advocacy group where we can, we, we can at least advocate for different, different groups and the donations that will come in, we can send it to whatever charity that we designate. Uh, so our mission statement is, is basically um, we're pro law enforcement. We're for restoring law and order. We're against this, this political hypocrisy that's going on, anti-police sentiment and rhetoric and, you know, uh, tying the hands of the cops, like reactive policing. We're against that. So that's the, that's the law enforcement side. Then we want to focus on the other side, to help the families of the deadly crime victims that have been impacted by these anti-police policies, because that's where in the low socioeconomic areas, in the urban areas, in the NYCHA houses, and those areas, uh, Brownsville, Bed-Stuy, East New York, East Harlem, we want to help that, them also because people forget about the victims. They're the victims. Like, like that, like that, that, that one-year-old Devel Gardner, the one, uh, he was killed. Right. He was shot, uh, I believe, last month. Um, and we also educate people on the voting process. And my my partner, Tatiana, she's big with the immigrant community, with the Russians, Ukrainians. So it's very important to get everybody registered to vote. We're not telling them who to vote for. We're giving them what each candidate like stands for. So, okay, this candidate is, is for law and order. This candidate is not. They're for defunding the police. Right. You decide, you know? So we, we, we want to be nonpartisan, unbiased, but we want to let the people know. You know Jason, what, what, I'm, what I'm hearing is that the politicians that voted this uh, diaphragm law, the city council and this moron mayor that signed it, that they're, they're having uh, seller's remorse, I should say, that they're thinking, oh, my God, what did we do? Because they see how crime has gone crazy in the city since that law that's become law. Right. And I'm hearing that they also want to put anti-crime back out there. Like they're putting anti-crime out there now, but in uniform. Right, so, which is kind of useless yeah, because you because right. you could see them a mile away. I mean, back in the days, you know, back in the days when they were wearing their 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 like Yankees jerseys, this big white guy who, in the hood, like you know who they were. Right. But when they're in the plain clothes car, you know, it takes them a second to figure out. You know. But at the, you know, at the same time, they came up with that list of disciplinary things that you can be hit with five days if you do a bad. Stop question and frisk. Right. It, I mean, it's crazy. So they at the same time they're talking out of the other side of the, their mouth. They want to hurt cops. Right. You know, but they want cops to do their job, obviously. Well, they want cops to do their job. Then they have to stop tying the cops' hands. They have right. to stop implementing these horrendous, egregious anti-police, you know, laws, policies. You know, right now there's no respect for law enforcement. No. no you know, no. Jason. So, I I got two questions for you. The first one is, um, let's say for argument's sake, I decided to start a nonprofit. How much money do you think I could make? <laughs> well, I mean, it's it's in the word nonprofit, so <laughs> that, that should be an no, indication. Between me and you. Yeah, between me and you. <laughs> Don't tell nobody. I, no, my actually. Second, um, my, my second question, uh, you guys are involved in a lawsuit now, right? Yeah, yeah. So as Bill Don't mentioned before, uh, with uh, with Blue Lives Matter NYC, with uh, Sergeant Joe Imperatrice, 
Yes. Um, we we basically wanted uh, Tatiana and I wanted to do something for the police since they were since the de Blasio was putting all these Black Lives Matters, which is which the movement itself is a very important movement. Black lives do matter, like everybody else's lives and blue lives matter or whatever. When you put the uniform on, that's your blue life. Um, so we we did applications to the city, to the to the DOT, to the street art mural application, and we got these responses back. And my my partner Tatiana, she sent emails for FOIA requests, the Freedom of Information Law, to find out what procedure Mayor de Blasio used to put to paint the black uh, the Black Lives Matter uh, murals. And we got them back saying that they'll get back to us in, in January of 2021. Okay, <laughs> that's a reasonable time frame, you know, whatever. So we went with, uh, so I so I started spoke, speaking to Joe Imperatrice, uh, one of my buddies from Blue Lives Matter, and we said, what if we do this by one police plaza? I mean, there's a frozen zone there. I mean, nobody will, uh, will vandalize it. And that's when we started to, uh, you know, get everything going. And now we have a lawsuit. We have our lawyer, James Mermigas, and he's a constitutional attorney. He also sued, I believe, Cuomo for the for the actual gyms to reopen, which he got he got them to reopen finally. So I know it's difficult because I'm, I'm not a huge guy. Yeah, yeah. I'm a week, I'm a week <laughs> to work it out again. I'm huge. Thunder and lightning right here, right, Mark? <laughs> it's good. You're in good shape. You're in good shape. <laughs> but but De Blasio admitted that he never applied for a permit or anything, right? To paint right. Black Lives Matter in front of uh, Trump Tower, right? right? So he told, I believe he told the Post because we had an article with the Post, and um, I believe he said something about dr Black Lives Matters transcends all normal, yeah, I heard normal boundaries, yeah. realities. It's a it's a movement that's hundreds of years in the making, and. With our Blue Lives Matter mural, we're not denouncing or detracting from the Black Lives Matter movement. Now everybody knows the organization is a little, a little Fugazi. shifty. Fugazi, yeah. yeah, it's a little shifty in their in their policy, anti-nuclear family, anti-police, um, pretty much Marxist-Leninist ideologies like socialist. Well, um, they were in LA. I think they were in LA, and the the chant was, "Kill the Jews, fuck the police." Yeah. Just this yesterday, yeah, in L.A., kill the Jews, fuck the police. Yeah, but 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 the people on on the ultra the ultra left, I call them the ultra progressive left, they they don't want to denounce it. Actually, Joe Biden just started denouncing it, but I think they were using it as a ploy to to <laughs> go against President Trump for his re-election. Re but it actually backfired because people need the police. Did you they see don't want to be Hey, did you see what Trump's new name is for him? What, what do you call him? Joe Hyden. Joe Hyden. Joe Hyden. <laughs> Joe Hyden. I love it. That's great. Joe, well, he's starting to come out now. I mean, he's still he's still fumbling and bumbling. He's still you know, I, I he's still you Sleepy know. Joe. He snapped on you. He's doing the dozens. He's like it's like you're in school. He's doing the dozens. He's got a name for everybody, and he's just changed it <laughs> instead of Sleepy Joe. I, Joe love, I loved Pocahontas the best. That was oh, Pocahontas was great. Oh, she, she's so, I mean, she so deserved that. She was about one tenth of one zero percent Indian. She had like no, yeah, she had no, yeah. no Native American in her at all. She used that to get preferred status. That's I'm a hundred percent more Indian than she is. You're a lot of things, man. I don't know if you get preferred status though. Well, my name is Indian. At least I have an Indian name. <laughs> Mind you, what next? You tell us your name. You tell Mind it every, every show. You, you tell us your name. My Yoannex is a, that's my real name, Jason. My Yoannex. It's a Dominican name. It's an Indian name. So at least I have the name. All right. So you know what? You can tell he he doesn't wear socks. That's how you can tell he's Dominican. Oh. <laughs> Chocolate, Chocolate does. Actually, yes, I, actually, Mark, I was talking to Bill. He said your Indian name, your Native American name is running with mouth. <laughs> with mouth, mouth wide open. Not bad. Running with mouth. Not bad. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm a big uh, believer. I don't wear um, anything open toe unless I'm on my way to the beach. Like, yeah, I'm wearing you, sneakers. I'm not walking around in flip flops. No, but you can't wear socks with flip flops, though. That's just okay, because it starts raining out and it gets wet. Then you have wet no, socks. Nobody wants age, that. There's a certain age you get to where it's it's acceptable to wear the socks with the sandals. Okay. 
And listen, I'm 53. Bill is closer to that age. I think Bill's got like two, maybe three more years if he's lucky before he, he throws on a pair of socks and he goes, you know what? I'm gonna <laughs> yeah, I'll have those knee-high socks with sandals. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you just don't care anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. We are fucked. So, Jason, what are you working on now? Tell us some of the things you're working on, some of the good deeds you're doing now. So, what, with our organization? Yeah. With standing up for NYC. No, no. So, We're for yourself. You're oh, in the yeah, oh, right. I know you're having a good time. What are you doing with right. your organization? Right. Because it's a nonprofit. So, that, you know, so yeah. I'm making a, making a ton of profit here. Um, uh, so, we've been, in, we've been involved in, uh, in over a dozen back to blue rallies. Um, one how, are those, how, how are those working out? Do we get a lot? What's the attendance like in those? Yeah. So, I mean, it, like it, when we first started, it was le less people because we had one by Gracie Mansion. We wanted to bring bring the heat to the mayor. You know, we wanted yeah, to bring yeah. it to his residence. And I spoke to the 19th Precinct Community Affairs. They set it up for us, the barricades. And we had it on, I believe it was... Um, Thursday, July second. It was two days before Fourth of July. It was it was it was something uh, International Police Association, uh, Police Officers Appreciation Day, or something like that. And it was a national thing. I think they were trying to get get it going nationwide for the first time because of all the stuff that was happening to the cops. You know, uh, with the riots and them being basically demoralized and everything. And uh, I mean, we had maybe a hundred people turn out for that one, but that was the first one. And then we just started doing more and more. We, we started helping other other groups, you know, sponsoring their rallies and then co-organizing other rallies like Marine Park, Gerritsen Beach, the Bay Ridge one where Antifa and BLM were throwing eggs, rocks and bottles at us. Marty Golden got sh got sprayed with some red stuff on his white shirt. And I'm like, Marty, did, did you get shot? He goes, no, I don't feel it. <laughs> so it was really bad. Yeah, it just how they you agitate us. The one, you were at the one with Scott Lebedo. Yes, we were at the one with Scott Lebedo. You yeah. had a, there was a picture of you uh, with him. Yeah, we were with Scott Lebedo. And, um, They're and all around was, the country as well. What's that? They, these uh, Back to Blue, it's all around the country. And a lot of them attract, obviously, like what you mentioned, BLM and Antifa. And, right. You know, it, um, and they coincide with Trump in a way sometimes. I know they just had a caravan through... Um, I think it was Portland. Okay. The the caravan, the Trump caravan that right, went back right. and blue and all that. And that's where that guy got killed. Yeah. That's where the guy got shot. He was part of that caravan. Right. So it's an interesting thing that we're going through right now, man. It is. But but we try to keep our organization out of the out of the politic arena because then it gets biased and you know, um, but it's tough. a lot of the back to blues, yeah. A lot of them have, yeah. have Trump's and Trump's uh, information and stuff. It's, it's regardless of uh, what you're trying to do. The perception from from the left is they just put them all together. Right. If you're if you're uh, if you're even talking about police and being proactive about police, then you definitely with Trump, and it's uh, you know kill the messenger. Right. Well, Trump is a law enforcement, you know, he's a very yeah. big promoter of law enforcement. I think uh, NAPO just endorsed him last month, the National Association of Police Officers. And uh, <laughs> which, which union endorsed him? Was it was it the PBA or the DEA? The I believe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Lynch, yeah. spoke at the convention. Right. Yeah. And that's the first time like ever that a, yes. that a union endorsed the president. But I but everybody knows that, you know, everybody knows pretty much where Trump stands with the military and the police and law and order and where Biden, you know, Joe, Joe Hyden stands, whatever. Yeah. You know, it was, it was disturbing to me when all of this started just to see, especially the NYPD become like punching bags for these protesters that, you know, all the media says they're peaceful, but someone's throwing bricks. They actually had pallets of bricks delivered to the middle of the protest area. Yeah. You know, like that can't be that can't be accomplished unless it's organized. Yeah, of and course it's I, organized. And when I saw that lieutenant that time hitting the head with a brick, thank God he had a helmet on. Yeah. Uh, and then one of his the cops pulled, pulled a gun on, on the, the guy bridge, and yeah. Blasio wanted the cop suspended. Yeah. And I think that was the police commissioner stood up. You know it's funny. Crazy. 
is that there used to be mock videos of uh, Antifa training. And it was like, um, they had like hidden videos from Antifa going to like uh, self-defense courses. And they were like, you know, like this and like, you know, but through constant training, now you watch them and they actually move around. Uh, I saw this video, they're moving around behind the cops using kind of sort of military tactics and um, coming up, flanking on each side, yeah. getting them from behind, abusing them from each side. And, and they're moving in a calculated way. So, you know, we laughed at first, but it, these guys are training on a regular basis on somebody's dime, you know? Well, that's the thing. When you, when you, when you find, find the source of the funding and you'll find the head of the snake. Yeah, I don't know if they want to look into that too much, though, because I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of this is, uh, you know, like, for example, the RNC. You know, when I'm watching these uh, these people leaving the, the convention there and they, be, you know, some of them have uh, police escorts like Rand Paul and then other people are just caught up in it. But they're surrounded by uh, groups of protesters. Right. And their aggression, the protesters, it's just, it's something like either you're possessed because right. the level that they're screaming at and how they're not listening, either they're possessed or they're acting. Right. And if they're acting, wouldn't it be a great like sound bite to put on the news how violent they are and look at them attacking, you know, just people leaving a convention? Yeah. Because they're not hitting them. They're not doing anything to break the law, but... Uh, like, for example, one of the people that they approached was um, a military person. Uh, you know, uh, he lost both legs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, uh, what, was that guy, uh, what, what was that guy's name? Um, I don't recall his name, but I just, uh, you know, he stood there and he was trying to yeah. talk. But the way she was just yelling constantly, I'm like, either this girl is possessed or because you can't look at another human being in the eyes. Right. Um you know, when they're being calm, because that's a tactic. You yell at me, I talk lower. Yeah. You know, they see, they teach you that the escalation of fucking verbal judo. You're yelling, I talk lower. Because eventually, psych, you know, the psychology behind it is you're going to, you're going to talk, we're going to get into a conversation. Well, you know what? It, it's definitely, it has to be Democrat. It has to be like the ultra left running that because one of the, one of the, one of the Democrats that spoke uh, at the RNC, Vernon Jones, um, he, he was harassed coming out, and he's African American, right? And they were yelling at him like, "Oh, you're a traitor," or whatever. And yeah, but he's so, like, he's like, there are, are what's that? Guy? Is it Kasich or something like that? Like we got, we we got oh, John Kasich. Yeah, he switched over. Yeah, we to got to speak at the DNC, yeah, right? Got the one guy, he's in the wrong fucking thing. Right, right. Kasich is over there. And that be pretending to be a Republican for whatever reason. Yeah. But he's really a liberal. And then you got the other guy over there, Vernon, and he he's really a conservative. Right. But, but he was yeah. really elected, so he was on the Democratic ticket, you know. Yeah. So. But you know, so I I disagree that uh, they don't know who's funding this. I of think course they, they know exactly who's funding this. Of course they know. They know they have intelligence on all of this stuff. I don't know why they don't release it. Because That's what I'm telling you, because a lot a lot of it might come from, uh, you know, if, listen, if you're hiring actors to make the left look crazy. And, you know, because if at that point right now, why, why don't you slug them? I don't think it's it's the I don't think it's the conservatives hiring anybody to make the left look crazy. I think it's just that's how it is. I think somebody's paying. You know, maybe George saying, Soros listen, or Tom I'm just Steyer. Playing, I'm just playing devil, devil's right, advocate. Right. But, you know, the, it's, it goes on the other side, too. You know what I'm saying? They, yeah. they infiltrate. They, they play these tricks. And trust me, I'm a conservative. I'm, you know, I'm a law and order guy. But I, I'd like to, you know, I'd like to see, you know, just take a step back and just say out of curiosity, this is kind of, you know, how could you scream like that? Because, like I said, the, the military guy, right? Um, he was bringing the level down. He was trying to have a, a conversation with this person. And... They just kept screaming and screaming and screaming this, the whole thing. So if you're in that state, something's really wrong with you. Right. Something's got to be wrong with, with all of them because they're all screaming the same shit. So either somebody's brainwashing you, you're in a trance, or you're fucking acting. No, I think, I think these people that protest, I think they really believe 
what they're protesting against. And I There's a lot really, of people out there, though. They really hate, a lot of these really hate the police. And, and the way it's reported, I saw CNN the other night saying it's mostly peaceful as buildings yeah, are mostly, burning yeah, it's like behind them. A, bu a building it's, burning it's behind all them. Getting, it's all the getting behind them. And they're saying, yeah, it's mostly peaceful, you know? It's like five different sh uh, videos of that. Yeah. But it happened five different times. Yeah. It's, it's, they're it's reporting, incredible. oh, it's peaceful and there's bur buildings burning. Oh, it's just a, it's a little fire. But that's the mainstream <laughs> media. That The mainstream media always tries to whip things around, you know, and and basically it's it's basically socialism or communism or like because communism is an extreme form of socialism, but the media is controlling what the people are seeing, like in North Korea, yeah, like they're they're in China. I don't think there's no mainstream no more. No, like you know even anything that you watch, like I used to trust. Uh, you know we didn't, we didn't get CNN came on when I was already in my teens. You know the Communist News Network, yeah, yeah. But that's that's what it is now. But back yeah, right, then, right. the cable news network, and uh, but ABC, you always trusted them. You always ever since, ever was, since Trump got into office, because they cannot fathom that. How did this guy get into office? Well, he's yeah. not a politician. That's why we were tired of politicians promising you, promising you, promising like 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 Joe Hyden yeah. for forty-seven yeah. years in office, that's a, right? That's a funny name. Joe. What has he done? Like what has he done? Nothing. Well, I I think anyone that's a career politician, it's it it should. Career and politician shouldn't be in the same sentence. Well, congressman was, was should be term limits. They should get eight years or twelve. But that's years. the threat. There should be term limits. But also, when our founding fathers created our government, they didn't make that as their primary jobs. They had jobs to go back to, blacksmith or electrician or whatever. They, they, they went home. They had yeah, jobs. Yeah, you used to do it for two years. Right. That's you, it. Uh, it was a, a a civic duty. Right. All right, I'll do it this two years. And you go, yeah. whatever you need, you go up there and you fight for what you need in Washington. But now it's become, you know. I mean, that's their only career. But then they also have business dealings on the side. Obviously, under the Obama administration, how many business dealings did the Clintons have with, 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 with Iran, with the, with that, with the, with the nuclear, uh, we, um, what is that, U-238, uranium-238? You know, when when uh, when Obama was making the hundred fifty billion dollar deal with Iran and yeah, Hillary Clinton was secretary of state. So she had some deals with her Clinton global and global initiative. Look, Joe both, Biden had some deals. Both, both sides do things like that. Because yeah. The rules have benefited. But we were talking about the, the way basically the war on police. It's right. been a war on police, at least for the last couple of years. And uh, right. you know, one of the first shows we had in the studio, Mark and I, we had Chief, retired Chief Louis Animal. Uh, and he wrote great one of the greatest chief, yeah. articles for the New York Post. That was after the cops had the water poured on them. Yeah, that, that happened last year. That's when yeah. they said, even like Dan Bongino and them, they said, that's the beginning of the disrespect. And of... that's, that's what it is. But it, yeah. it's almost like when the riots happened in New York City, when de Blasio ordered the police to have a light touch. What do you mean, have a light touch? Light touch, touch yeah. As we're getting bricks thrown at us, you know. And then the, the other problem with that is when they do make arrests, they take them down to central booking and they're out in a couple of hours. It's a right. truly exactly. catch and release when you so catch that, a big fish. Yeah. You, you, know, it's funny. you know, it's funny. Um, there's a new bill, and for I think it's uh, New York, LA, Portland, and uh, somebody else, uh, another state, where they're looking to refuse uh, federal funding because of their um, inability to uh, protect their citizens. Well, Trump was going to stop sending federal aid yeah. to those cities because they let them run in into the ground. Yeah. You know? Now, I don't always agree with everything Trump does or says. He tweets a lot. I know he's got to stop that. That's crazy. That's you know, crazy, but, you know. you know, focus on what you're doing and what you've done. Don't, don't back, you know don't what go they, back and forth. You know what they did in Portland that was brilliant? They deputize some of the state police to be federal officers. Right. So now when they lock someone up, they get charged federally. Federally, right. So that, brilliant. I don't know why they didn't do that earlier because now these weasel DAs in Portland and uh, these other areas. Seattle. I think Seattle, you know, Tennessee came up with some law too that's uh, pretty strict, like kind of sort of like the RICO Act. If you get caught with uh, inciting a riot or involved in a riot, they're, uh, yeah, Tennessee just came up, uh, they're pushing a bill anyway.
very, very strict punishments. But, you know, you're talking about blue states, you know, uh, uh, picking up their, uh, you know, and, and putting these, these laws through. So we're dividing the country like that way. You know what I'm saying? Well, I, I think under, under Trump's um, presidency, it's becoming more divided because you have the left going further left. Yeah. You know, and it's basically going towards that Marxist, Leninist ideology, socialism. And that's not good because if, you know, that will make our country, you know, the actual socialist states of America. We don't want that. We want democracy. We want freedom. We want constitutional rights, you know, capitalism, basically. <laughs> but, you know, you know the, perfect, the perfect storm exists right now in regards to policing because at least in New York City, you have a mayor who is a pro progressive. You have a city council that's progressive. And you have the district attorney's office, who's a progressive, this guy Vance. Yes, they're all Vance. believing, and, and at the same time, they all have this ideology of let's empty Rikers Island. Yeah. And let's empty the state prisons. And then COVID came along, and that gave them the excuse to empty Rikers Island. Well, right. you, know, you know what, though? They're emptying New York City. <laughs> You're yeah, right. Much. You're right. It's I like, mean, I think I saw like 13,000 or 18,000 vacant apartments in New York City right now. Yeah. No, it was, it, it was, it was up to like 60,000, I think around 60,000 or something. Buying, like they're buying houses upstate or in other places, sight unseen. Yeah. Um, I don't agree with it. You know, I think if they, everybody would just stuck around and fought and demand, you know, with because you're talking about all the people with the money leaving or right. just choosing not to be in the city anymore. Well, that, but, that's what that's what our organization, you know, is trying to fight for. And we're trying to. We're trying to advocate for pro-law enforcement. We need law enforcement. We need law and order. Otherwise, you have anarchy and chaos. Right. That's what you have right now. And with the bail reform, which was horrible, I think they amended a few things in the bail reform, but they need to repeal that completely. Let the judges decide. Well, that's also yes. why they, I'm hearing that the city council wants to overturn the diaphragm law. But I say, no, you already created that. Let, right. let the courts overturn it. You right. morons created this. Let's go to the courts and have the courts bitch slap you and tell you what morons you are. Pretty also, much. Also, in the same vein, bitch slap the mayor for signing that piece of trash. Right. And let's, let's remember, it started in Albany with Cuomo. Yeah. It started out as the choke bill or whatever. Yeah, but don't right. do if If you, um, for example, if, uh, if the federal government is going to help you right now, it's going to help you in the form of... Um, a, a police reform bill and basically the police reform bill is going to be you're going to get money allocated to hiring more cops so basically the federal government is going to be paying paying for your police force and it, it's it's going to happen all through the states that they had the riots so in a way they actually won they freed up their budget um and they can give it away the money for whatever causes they want, and the federal government's going to fund their police force. Right, but but now what about our billion dollars that was defunded from the NYPD? Oh, what listen, happened, listen, you know, this, this was the idea, okay, but in reality, Chicago is, I don't know, $82 billion in the hole or some shit like that, with no money that's going to come from the federal government. So uh, what is Chicago going to do right now? Declare bankruptcy. Property taxes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, that, that's Lori Lightfoot. That's Mayor Lightfoot. She's she's running that city into the ground, just like De Blasio is running the city into. Is, is you know, Lightfoot the city into the friends, uh, friends of Pocahontas? It sounds like another Indian name. Yeah. Lightfoot, Pocahontas. Lightfoot, running with mouth, Pocahontas. <laughs> no, but if, if New York City loses the tax base of all the, all the rich people that left, if they don't come back. The city's going to be a disaster area. They're not, well, coming, back. Well, they're not Cuomo, coming back. Cuomo is going to buy them drinks, he said, if yeah, they come back. He's begging he's going to, to come He's going to take them to dinner, make them dinner, and buy them drinks so they can come back. I, I have a pet peeve, too. That whole, the MTA, the head of the MTA, who was appointed by Cuomo, he was crying like a bitch in the New York Times yesterday that the MTA is like, I don't know, $10 billion in the hole or something. You know something? You know what, what the problem of that is? It started before this happened because they let people jump the turnstile purposely. Yeah. You know why? Because they wanted the idiots who live in the suburbs who commute there. They're going to hit us with congestion pricing. 
Right. With the, with the, the turnstile jump. Right. Yeah, but COVID fucked up their plan. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And now, you know, right. they, they made jumping the turnstile. It's not a crime. Let me tell you something. Right. Forget, well, about, forget about the residential real estate in New York City. Forget about those apartments. Commercial real estate. Do you know how many abandoned office spaces there are right now? And that aren't coming back because they figured out everybody could work from uh, mostly from home. Yeah. And if you if you're in that business, you're screwed right now because it's like wow, you, is that so that you're in a hotel, huh? Yeah. And uh, let me ask you something. So, how do, you, how do you put this on the form so we we, we get this covered with the nonprofit? <laughs> <laughs> how you fill out your expense report? Yeah. I was in Atlantic City. And you haven't even started losing money yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I didn't even gamble yet. Yeah. <laughs> but speaking about speaking about money, though, so our organization, we we um we actually sent FOIA requests, the Freedom of Information Law, to to the city to find out what what the mayor and his co-mayor wife did with the one point two five billion dollars that they allocated to that Thrive NYC program, right. the mental health initiative, and homeless outreach where obviously there's more crazies on the street now and more more homeless. Obviously, the plan's not working. So where did that money go? Because we could use that to refund the police. So that's what we're working on now as well, also. With, 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 once how the Blue long, Lives Matter mural gets painted. How long do you think that parole request would take to come back? Uh, from what they said also, just like the Blue Lives Matter, the, the Black Lives Matter request that we did, January 2021. That's that's all the email. We have all the emails that we gave to our 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 attorney, but he's focused on the Blue Lives Matter mural by One Police Plaza right now. Um, and like I said before, that Blue Lives Matter mural was to honor the fallen cops, but to boost the morale of the cops that are working now. So they can, when they go to One PP headquarters, when they see it on the floor and it's nice and nice and done, that'll give them a little a little boost that there are organizations that are backing them. Absolutely. Yeah, listen, listen, I'm not trying to start problems, but uh, you need to talk to this Tatiana and tell her to get on board here and, and, and crack a whip. Oh, she, she cracks the whip. Trust me. She's she, she does. She's the brains and the beauty. Let me tell you me. I'm just a, I'm just me. Whatever. Are you, uh, Jay, one of the big things that we talk about, we'd like to get more involved in and not just, you know, our podcast goes out nationally. We wish we had a bigger audience. We have a pretty big audience, but. We're concerned with cops, and we hear from cops from all over the country about PTSD and about police suicide. And we really want to, to try to help out with that because I can't even imagine being a cop right now. No, it's very it, difficult. It was tough when we were on. Yeah, it was. I can't imagine what it's like now. You yeah. Know? And the pressures coming from the outside and the, the, the um, executive level of the police department not backing you up but still want you to do your job, still want you to take guns off the street, but realizing that if you do an improper stop question first, you can lose five days. Right. And they it's didn't ridiculous. squash that shit. You know what I mean? So how much behind you are they really when they don't have your back? They're not because, and then we, I, I, we, I was asked on Fox and Friends last month when we were talking about the Blue Eyes Matter mural, Brian Kilmeade asked me a question. So, uh, because uh, the, the Seattle police chief uh, had retired or resigned or whatever. Right. And they asked me a question about, well, what do you think about, about Commissioner Shea? You know, do you think he's going to retire? I said, I, I have no clue, <laughs> you know, whether he's, he's going to retire or not. But it's shit rolls downhill. So, the, so it comes from the higher up. So I was trying to tell them that the commissioner is like a puppet, basically, for the mayor. Right. The mayor is is playing political hypocrisy. You're playing one side against the other. You're supposed to be impartial, unbiased. You're supposed to be down the middle. You're supposed to be for your for your citizens, for the constituents, for the safety of, of the city. But you're choosing one side instead of law and order. So I said, you know, I it's up to him whether he resigns or not, but it's not going to make a difference whether it's Jimmy O'Neill who was, a, who was a great guy when, when I was in OCCB. He was our our um, our OCCB bureau chief, James O'Neill. And he couldn't do anything either because you're coming, it comes from the top down. Right. If you're getting shit from the top, 
I think when he first had Bratton, when Bratton came back, I don't know. Bratton was a good. Bratton was like a year, year and a half, but I think De Blasio was so clueless then Bratton could just say, tell him anything, and he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then once he started learning what he could do and how damaging he could be, and under O'Neill he did some horrendous shit. Yeah. And you know, some people suggested that he caused the cop assassinations, his whole anti-cop rhetoric, you know. Uh, and then now under the, this new regime, he's been just outrageous. Well, you remember when when Blue Lives Matter started yeah. was around 2014 after the death of, of, of Lou and Ramos. That's when the Blue Lives Matter took, took place. And then they were saying the Black Lives Matter took place in 2013. That's when it started. Um, but you, I, I don't know if you remember going to those funerals. I, I went to those funerals. Uh, Lou and Ramos. Um, the other detective, um, uh, Mio Soda's familiar. Right, right, right. I went to the funerals in the Bronx. Found out assassinations. These right. Days. But when, when the mayor came to speak, they, every, every cop turned their back. And that was the yeah, big headline. Rightfully so. And the, ball, the, some of the, the, ballsless, the ballsless bosses that didn't, I have no respect for. Right. But he should have learned from that. Like, you know what? Maybe maybe take take responsibility for your actions, right. you know? Watch your words. And then, and then plus we had, we had a, you know, like President Obama for eight years who could have, who could have closed that racial divide. He created more because he never denounced any of the cop killings either right. when he was president. So, you know, you have all these factors, all these politicians that are playing, they're playing both sides. Right. I think it's, it's sort of be, being woke to be anti-police, you know, like if a politician backs the police that's not cool if he's a certain a certain persuasion of politician but know? that's what happened in germany 1933 when hitler assigned the ministry of of defense uh he said go get the police force and not not really defund them but change them around make them ss i either you're with us or you're dead what do you think they did sure but that was kind of like the defunding now, I guess. Well, de defunding now is just, it's so asinine as to be just so ridiculous that you can't be serious about it. Anyone that suggests that has, you know, has no brains in their head. If you've ever been a victim of a crime, the, the sight of the police is a welcome sight. It you know? is. Especially if it's a violent crime. Right. You know? And you have to think, because there's some bad, bad people out there. You know, right. and you would think the other side thinks that these people are good people you know, because they want to cut them out of prison. They want to cut them out of Rikers. They don't right. want to punish them when they commit a crime. The guy who, who attempted to rape the girl on the subway the other subway. day, was he actually released the next day? I'm hearing that. Yeah, I don't know. If that's I, I didn't I didn't check. I didn't check the uh, he had a seventy five thousand dollar bail. OK, so he's in. Yeah, because I, no, 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 I didn't say he's in. I said he had a seventy five thousand dollar bail. Well, you think he's coming up with 75 K? He's hanging out. I don't know. I don't know. I'm sure it would be in the paper if he got out. But I mean, listen, some people in Hollywood. Why bail though? Some people in Hollywood. They were they were sending uh, money for the for the rioters in in freaking Minneapolis, you yeah. know, to get them out of jail. Yeah. But rather than helping the communities that are burning, especially in the low socioeconomic areas, the urban areas, that's where it impacts the most with these anti-police policies. And that's what my our organization is trying to 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 shed light on that and bring you know bring more people's attention to that. So hopefully we can vote the people in that are pro law enforcement that will get rid of these policies because it, it's so important. So our, everybody's vote counts. Everybody's voice matters. We were the we were the not so silent majority, and now we're starting to to wake up. Do you um, do you guys? Um... I mean, you, you have the rallies, right? Yeah, the back to blue. Uh, you, um, and you have a lawsuit. We have the lawsuit going on. And we have other things that we're working on that we can't really discuss right now because, you know, like I said. With but the, as far as social media goes, um, you guys obviously are probably very active on there too, right? Right. So so my partner, Tatiana, she, she created the Facebook group. And then I came on board 
and it just blossomed from there. Right now, we have almost 13,000 members in our group, our Facebook group, standing I'm up. Not, I'm not seeing 13,000 people watching us right now. I you don't know. know. I mean, maybe it's a holiday fans. weekend. I don't know. Listen, some people are away. Some people are, you know. <laughs> some people are in Atlantic City getting ready to put that to the City, table. Right? <laughs> <laughs> This is the first time, this is my first trip since since pre-pandemic. You know, uh, isn't, isn't, trips. That, isn't that unbelievable? I was talking to Mark and to our, our producer that we've done one show in the studio since March. So that's why we've been do, we've been on Zoom and Facebook Live. And this actually has been very successful for us. No, that's great. Yeah. That's great. And um, there's a couple of organizations I'm part of. I'm sure you guys know the FOP, Fraternal Order Police. Yes, of course. I'm in Lodge 38. Listen, let me tell you the something. National Police that. Association, Region 2. Just look at what we're doing right now. Bill's, the Zoom is great. Bill's in his house. I'm in my house. You're in Atlantic City, you know, doing police work for your nonprofit so you can write it off. And. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get. You know Listen, here. if you do, you. you do That's one true. Zoom meeting <laughs> for for the weekend, you could just write that off. Yeah, yeah. Gonna, <laughs> you went live nationally. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but like I said, so so with my with my PI firm, with my with my uh, my Allegiance Investigative Solutions, um, I'm part of different organizations as well. The World Association of Detectives, Society of Professional Investigators, and we have like global trips that we take. And and um, we were supposed to be in Panama, Aruba. I was supposed to be in Montenegro and Croatia. Wow. That all got canceled. It was all canceled because it is. What, what is that called? The the World Detective World, Asso World Association of Detectives. Yeah, I keep so trying to join that. They keep rejecting me. <laughs> are these are these all drinking clubs? <laughs> I, I had to send my I, I sent my arrest record and they rejected me three times. <laughs> get this guy out of here. Like, hey, maybe he can tell jokes. He's a comic. Bring him. He's a comic. That's that's because he wears socks with his sandals. That's chocolates, right? right? The chocolates. What are what are most of your cases that you do with your PI firm? What what kind of cases? So what I do, I do criminal and civil cases. I do uh, executive protection uh, cases, which, which which we knew as dignitary protection, but now it's executive protection. Uh, um, I do um, I do background checks, surveillance, counter surveillance, matrimonial you have, you have issues. Employees? You have a lot of What's that? No, I don't have any employees. I'm single member LLC. I just I started up last year, but I get contracted out by other other larger companies. So I'm not really there's no competition. They'll contract me out, and it's like a PI to PI. And I just finished up a case. One of my clients, uh, he's in Germany. So with the World Association of Detectives, I was able to link up with them. They sent an email out, like it's a mass email serve, and it goes to all of our thousands of members worldwide. So if I ever needed something from Germany or 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 the actual UK or South America, I can send an email out. So I responded. I so took the case. I'll send, I'll send you a Wiener Schnitzel, yeah, yeah. I'm not supposed to laugh at my own jokes. You know? yeah, yeah. Those are good. Farfik Nugan, yeah. Hey, remember when um, you know we were on the job and you'd go to like uh, you'd have a detail and it would be like uh, the Polish parade or something like that, and they'd have the, and you'd go up and it'd be like, hey, uh, what's the best thing you got? You know, and they, like you try to get it on the arm. And yeah, you're hitting your arm. Like, those t-shirts, uh, you, got a, you got an extra large there? No, no, the blue one. Yeah, give, give me the blue one. Uh, thanks a lot. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, Step but now off, cops can't do that now. You Cops can't do that. That's it. No way. You, can't get, you couldn't even get free coffee. Remember, they were giving you CDs, oh, command that, disciplines man. or whatever? You know, all of that, right corrupt, all of that corruption stopped. Uh, you know, after 9-11 when everything was free and that no one said anything about it, you know? Right. Because, you know, when you're working 16 hours a day, you're not going to go buy your own coffee. Yeah, we were down there doing the Bucket Brigade. Right. I came, I was in Spanish Harlem, PSA 5. Right. I was we in the, the Bucket two, Brigade. Well, I was in the 2-3 squad. 2-3, uh, there you go, yeah. I was so, so, the, yeah. so when I was there, basically any collar we made, any arrests we made, We'd have to go to the two three, the two five, the two eight, to the hub. Remember the hub? Yeah. The two eight hub. Yeah. Right. We have to go there, and they'd be like, "Oh, housing. What the fuck? What do you, What do you guys got now? What bag of shit? You know? Oh, uh, a gun collar. It was a gun collar. Like one of my first collars. I was I was working uh, 
the the freaking King King Towers, you know King Towers, yeah, 115 in Lenox, yeah. And I, I I got a gun collar. Guy was trying to rob somebody. We chased him across the street off housing, but it started on housing. Called an 85, first time ever. Housing post five, chasing a guy with a gun, 190 Lennox, or something like that. And the next thing you know, I come out of the building. The guy's gone. He jumped the fence. He goes under the car. You have everybody and their mother there. And, and then and then one of the chiefs or whatever, who's who's housing post five? I'm like, me. Like, good job. We we got the guy. It was my first collar. I was, remember there was I was a sergeant in the C4 when I first got promoted. There was this young cop and he looked like Bart Simpson, you know? And he was out at the upper end of the precinct, and we heard him on the air go, Shots fired! <laughs> Screaming like, Shots fired! And, you know, everyone responded, and whatever happened, happened. He came into the precinct. When he walked in the door, everyone went, Shots fired! <laughs> you never lived that down, you know? That's the thing. I remember, I remember yeah, those can't times. Always be, can't always be cool on the air. You know, you're not going to be shots fired. So. Like, hey, yeah, so Central, like, listen, uh, by the way, I'm chasing somebody with a gun. Right, right, right. No big deal. No emergency, Central. The guy's right. shooting at me. No emergency. He right. missed. He didn't go to qualify training. He missed. <laughs> Don't worry about it. But that's the thing. So everybody asks, like, does everybody, you know, do you miss the job? I miss the, I miss the banter. I miss the camaraderie, like, like we're doing right now. Right. You know, like that's what we would do back in the squad room or, or, or an OCCB when we were doing our kites or whatever. We would just go back and forth, shoot the shit. Right. But I, was, I don't miss yeah. the, what the was micromanaging that? the bureaucracy. I don't miss that. Well, remember, remember the restaurant that was uh, feeding us in 9 11? Down there, the Italian you know, restaurant. The one on Canal Street? The one, the oh, was that, what's that called? Um, it was the what Italian was restaurant. Yeah, on Canal Street. Yeah, what was the name? It had like four four letters, right? Four, and they, put, uh, they put all the all the banners all over it and stuff like oh, that. Everything was pro police. And, yeah, and, and, and you go, uh, go there, you go in there and eat, and then you would see people from your command that weren't even working down there coming down there, oh, yeah, coming yeah. there to eat for free. Like, right? Yo, what the fuck is? Wait, wait, wait a minute, <laughs> aren't you RDO today? Like, aren't you RDO? Oh, guys, you guys would be off duty. Isn't today your RDO? What are you yeah, doing? Yeah, like, aren't you? You're not supposed to be here. But, but then, but no, but then there was that, that other church, uh, 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 Trinity Church. Yeah. Remember that Trinity Church? Yeah. We used to go in there, take all our stuff off, and they just had, and we were sleeping on the pews. And, I remember they had food. They had food. Some, of the worst, some of the worst places you could get to work was uh, Fresh Kills. And oh, I remember the first time I went the there. Landfill. And it was, it was like hell. Yeah. It was like you saw the pedals and there was smoke coming out of the water. Yeah. And the methane gas. And I remember and we said, okay, park your car down and we'll take a bus up here. Now you've got to disinfect, you've got to do this. Uh, that lasted for about one day. Fucking okay, about next week, everyone's driving their cars up there. Don't worry about disinfecting. Ah, I don't care, you know. Yeah, but, but how, how bad was it after the towers fell? They weren't giving us with masks or nothing like that? No, it's horrible. And that's why it is, it's, it's very important for the, for the retired guys that are watching go to the to the world trade center screening i go every year i do too okay. i go every year to queens i go to i go to left frack the over there yeah and my my actual doctor is dr dr cherizova i love her i can call her hey can you refill the prescription i have a thyroid problem now you know and they were checking it to make sure there's no cancer right and then i have a thing with, with my with my lymph node they're making sure they're doing the sonograms but it was the dea Sonogram, remember that? Like a few years ago, they had a DEA sonogram and heart thing. Very well, important. The, the Sergeant uh, Benevolent Association did a good job too. They, uh, you know, urge us to go. I go to Mount right. Sinai once a year. I go. Uh, year. I go to Left Rack every year. I take all those tests. Yeah, yeah. everything. I never pull up the results, but I take all those tests. You never get the results, right? <laughs> Mark, we're calling you. Come in. It's urgent. <laughs> And they, Stop wearing they, socks with they, sandals. He asked, he asked for a second opinion. He said, "Yeah, you're ugly too. That's a Rodney Dangerfield joke." <laughs> <laughs> I had to, see. I gave a footnote. I gave him credit for that one. <laughs> so, what do you got coming up, Jason? Um. So we the, the, a couple of more rallies that were that are that are in the works right now. Um, one's going to be in Staten Island. Uh, Look at it. <laughs> yeah, so we're trying to do that, and uh, we're also... I would only go to Staten Island if aviation picked me up until it flew me there. <laughs> Driving to Staten Island is like, you get suicidal. It's fun. 
it's horrible. You know? Well, with the traffic, remember oh, yeah, the, during the about. pandemic, there was no traffic. So my, my what, actual daughter. What is that Verrazano now? Seventeen bucks or something. Well, like with that? the Easy Pass, it's like twelve. I don't know. It's it's like some weird number. But but didn't they say that after the construction, they they weren't going to charge at all? It was just to cover the cost. Oh, I don't believe that shit. Well, no, that that's what they said when it was first built. Yeah. They said, oh, we're just going to put a toll till we cover the cost. And yeah, okay. <laughs> at least they didn't name fifty the years later. Formal bridge. You know? Yeah, 50 years later. But I, but when I would drive to see my daughter in Long Island to go pick her up in Huntington, um, there was no traffic. I'm like, wow, 40 minutes. Wow. Yeah. Now it's so like, the, oh, forget it. A couple of weeks ago, I, I, I made it back to up to Westchester from Montauk in two hours and 15 minutes. Wow. That was like, that was the fastest I ever did that in my yeah, life. That's crazy. There was no traffic. You know? But now with everybody leaving the city because of the anti-police policies and everything. I'm hoping there's less traffic. <laughs> well, the well, thing too, the, the restaurants are putting people in the streets. That's right. kind of, that's an accident waiting to happen. No, it's oh, happened. No, they're, they're, right, it's happened a few times. It's happened a few times, right? But but what is De Blasio? What is our great mayor doing about indoor dining? Are they are they doing anything? No, I heard about that indoor point. dining. Cuomo said there's no plan. Right. There has to be a plan because October first is when those outdoor dining permits are are done. Yeah, I don't know. I don't understand. I don't understand. Like uh, well, the specific businesses that they're targeting to make sure that the economy stays stagnant, it, that it, it can't. We, it's so stupid. But that's because it's an election year. And, and God bless. Seems the to realize. Owners. If you no seems to realize all these correlations, like there's us. The pandemic, the murder hornets, right? The murder hornets were going to attack everybody. <laughs> and the race riots. Next, it's going to be a meteor, right? Right. There's a meteor that's going to be coming close to Earth or hitting Earth at the same day, like freaking election day, November third. Same, same day Trump wins. <laughs> right. That's what I'm saying. No, I'm serious. There's a meteor. meteor. Like, like if you Google it, there's a meteor that yeah. will be coming. Same day Trump hits. Yeah, Google it. Just and and then the, and then the aliens are going to be coming right behind them, and they're going to say, "What the hell? No, sorry, we're going to turn around. We're yeah, going to go back to Pluto." Well, could you could you imagine when you talk about being a bad government, a bad politician, that you put homeless people in the in hotels in one of the gem communities of the, of the Manhattan on the Upper West Side, 79th Street, Broadway, right around there? You put Rikers Island inmates. Yeah, but Bill, Bill, those were the, where all the SROs were. No, the one single, of them was a single, hotel. single room occupancies were destroyed that neighborhood. And what was the easiest way to destroy it again? Do it again. Do it again. Yeah, do it the again. Upper West Side used to be a fucking shithole. And then all of a sudden, when we cleared it up, all the, everybody with money, the new money, they wanted to live on the Upper West Side. Yeah. All the actors and stuff like that, it became posh, it became chic. And now they're, they're bailing out in droves. Instead of fighting for their community, they're bailing out in droves. They're all scared. They're pussies. Fuck them. That's why we need all active retired guys. I know the active guys can't really express their opinions because, especially on social media, they'll get hammered. I mean, not even CDs. They'll, they'll just get they'll, well, they 30 in stay, a year. Suspensions. Stay whatever. Yeah. Stay yeah, because social. that's important right now. What a cop. Right. Guy. But... If if the active guys can can support and follow groups like Standing Up for New York City and Blue Lives Matter and law enforcement officers and other other organizations, I think that will spread the word more because you have the cops, the, their families, their families, and then their friends, and it's like a domino effect. But the retired yeah. guys also, the retired guys should voice their opinions also because we, uh, we have our pensions already, so we're, they're, they're not going to take it away. That's a really good shirt, by the way. That's uh, that's the official shirt from um, standing up for New York, NYC. No, no, it's it's my polo for USA. Oh, so th that's not the shirt for. Uh, no, 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 because we, we don't have we don't have money right now to make the shirts. That's why. Those polo shirts cost you know about like, hundred bucks, man. That's a, you know like, for a donation from you, Mark. You know why? Because you're blowing it all in the in the Atlantic. Atlantic right? City. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Listen. How about a couple of shirts for these poor people that have freaking spent Listen, money? You have no idea what it, what it's like here. It's a holiday weekend, right? Okay. And with, with the, everybody's wearing masks. And like I said, it's my first time here. I I, I always get comp rooms at Caesars, Harris. You know, uh -huh. with total reward, I get comps. And uh, they they were kept hammering me. Come back, we're open. I'm like, no, I'm not gonna wear a mask. Tomorrow they're officially starting indoor dining. 
in Atlantic City. Wow. Or I, I I don't know if it's just Jersey, but they're officially doing indoor dining. So you don't have to sit outside anymore. So, but it's just really weird. When you're gambling, you have to wear a mask. You can't drink or smoke. It's it's just it's not the same what it was That's pre pandemic. So Anybody that you see out there is a real gambler. I mean, those guys, they can't, they'll wear a mask, anything, whatever you need me to do, I need, I'll be here. <laughs> well, I, I just, like I said, I came because they, they offered the, 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 the comp rooms. I haven't been away since before, since before March. Uh -huh. I was just going stir crazy in New York. I mean, you just like, where else is there to go? Poconos? All right, Poconos. <laughs> you know, what are you going to do there? You know what's funny is that you know you think of business. Mount Harry Lodge. <laughs> you mentioned the Poconos. The Poconos has uh, about three places that I perform that there on a regular basis. Um, Pocono Palace, uh, the Cove, right. and uh, there's another one too. And I'm thinking of these people right now, and um, you know those businesses were like. It was true. You know, it's like one of those things when I, when I was growing up, uh, you know, if you had a date, some girl you were, you know, you, you were starting to get serious about before you took the trip away somewhere, you did a weekend in the Poconos or Lake George. You know what I'm saying? Lake George, but, yeah. And that's and, and for a lot of people, sometimes you see they get married there. So then like you're like, this guy's just got out of prison. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting married in the Poconos. Which is actually better than that marriage that you see outside of City Hall. You ever see that where they got the the swing set set up and you can take your wedding picture there? <laughs> <laughs> I was in the gym one day and I was talking to my friend and he goes, uh, he goes, you just got married. So I'm like, oh, cool. Where are you going for your honeymoon? I was a kid at this point. We were like 20s. And he goes, uh, oh, we're going to stay at this airport. Uh, we're going to stay at this hotel by the airport by JFK for the weekend. And I was like, nah, seriously, what are you going to do? And like, no, he, that's what he was going to do. Oh, my God. <laughs> that was the weekend. At least he didn't tell you he was staying at the hotel near the 4-4 precinct on the Deacon. <laughs> 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 Felony Hotel, right? What was the name of that one again? I forget the name. Stadium Hotel, I think it was called. No, yeah, yeah. Stadium's it was bad. Right next, it was right next to the 4-4 precinct. The old uh, that, four -four. Yeah, that one's bad. Stadium's bad. No tell, no tell motel. <laughs> I went to a motel. I went to a hotel in the Bronx one time. I said, "How much is it for a short stay?" The guy goes, "How long do you want to stay?" I was like, "I don't know, like an hour." He goes, ten bucks." Fucking <laughs> 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 <You're> sport, <laughs> man. Ten <laughs> five bucks. minutes. I was like, "Sweetheart, listen, we gotta get ready. We gotta get out of here." <laughs> <laughs> ten bucks. <laughs> Well, anyway, uh, we're, we're approaching the witching hour here. Yeah. So, uh, what what can you promote? What do you, what, what yeah, should be the plug, Jason? Up for? What's that? What where where can we go to find more about um, standing up for NYC? So, like I said, we're on Facebook, standing up for NYC. Um, we have a we have a private group, and we have a public page, standing up for NYC. We're on Twitter, standing up for the number four on Twitter. We're on Instagram, also standing up for, for NYC, uh, YouTube. So when when I when we do rallies and when I go Facebook Live, which usually generates about five thousand views. Like if it, like if you look at our, uh, like on on our page, our Facebook page or our group, it says about five thousand views, four point five, you know, whatever. Um, so that's what we we post it back on on onto uh, onto YouTube. And we're just trying to get people like to speak up, you know, to, to not be afraid anymore. I know people are afraid that people's jobs are at jeopardy. You know, oh, I can't say that I'm pro-police. I can't say I'm pro-Trump because I, I'm going to get crap at work or whatever. So we're just trying to get people, you know, to remember that we're in a democracy. We're in America. This is the United yeah, yeah. States of America. This is the land of the free, the home of the I mean... I don't understand what's happening. I don't think anybody likes what's going on right now. And I want my daughter, I want everybody else's kids to grow up in in the country that we grew up in, playing stickball on the street. And, you know, I mean, it was different times back then, you know, uh, but that's the whole thing. Just voice your opinion and vote. Everybody's got to register to vote. Get out and vote. And, um, you know, November 3rd and also next year for the mayoral election, 
you know, so we, we've been we've been close with Bill Pepitone running for New York City mayor, the retired cop. Great guy. There's also Curtis Sliwa. I know Eric Adams is running for mayor. God forbid uh, that guy gets elected. I mean, look, he's no, it's, friend of, he's no friend of the police, that guy. Right. But then again, would you rather have Corey Johnson or would I you rather want either one of those three? There's three clowns that we got to talk about. Eric Adams is one. Corey Johnson is another. And Scott String is another. Three of them. All three of them should never be mayor. And then, of course, Jamani Williams. Jamani Williams. I, I, I actually went to Brooklyn College with him back in yeah. 1995. It is for, it can't, it, yeah. it could, you know, you're just trading one idiot for another. Hey, you know what I was thinking? The next time we could do this, uh, this interview, you could bring us out there. <laughs> That's where we could be. <laughs> We're doing it, right? We could all do this poolside. We could do the next podcast poolside. <laughs> Atlantic City, baby. But, but we have to wear masks, though, when we're outside. We have to wear masks. Standing, standing up uh, for New York, NYC, standing nonprofit. <laughs> I, we we got to plug something, too. Mark and I ha are on um, this show, Police Off the Cuff After Hours, is on Patreon. And uh, you can get on it by patreon.com slash police off the cuff. And we have three tiers. One is called The Bucket. It costs $7 a month. The second one is polish my rack and the third one is dipped in butter that's all the most expensive one that cost eleven dollars wait didn't mark say balls, balls are balls are dipped in butter well we don't say balls we just say dipped in butter, dipped in butter. so <laughs> they the people know what we're talking about anyway i'm also i'm doing a uh for the patreon customers i'm doing a real time uh real crime show and so far i've interviewed michael o'keefe who spoke about a triple murder that he worked on in the A3 squad. And I spoke to Sandy Rabino, a Manhattan special victims detective who recounted this horrendous child abuse case she had. And once it goes out to our Patreon customers for, to, for two weeks, we then put it out for all of our fans. So I just started doing these real time, uh, crime episodes. If you're a detective out there, a sergeant, lieutenant, and you have a great case, that you want to talk about, drop me an email at uh, otcpod1 at gmail.com. That's off the cuff, uh, Peter Oscar David1 at gmail.com. Uh, give me a, like a two page synopsis on your case. And if it's interesting, it's a really good case, I'll, I'd love to uh, interview you. Mark also has something he's doing. I, 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 um, I'm doing a tribute. I, I, um, I like to do moving pieces for my segments for my patreon and the first one i did was uh an interview with uh, andrew singer he's uh, a retired uh, passaic county sheriff and he had uh, a child that uh at three and a half years old was diagnosed with meningitis and mm -hmm. it kind of sort of changed his life it's a really really moving story and um somehow they're they're, they're all surviving they're all managing through laughter through love and um that's my first piece. And uh, I'm working on uh, right now, I'm doing a, a kind of sort of tribute. It's a tribute to uh, M Mike Sheehan. He was a, a detective, a great detective with the NYPD. He handled a lot of high profile cases. And uh, after that, he went on to be a investigative reporter for Fox 5 News. He was a bigger than life character, a real sweetheart. Um, I had the honor of uh, introducing him and, and, and working with him a little bit when I was uh, coordinating the homicide course for the NYPD. He was one of our speakers and I'm um, putting together a tribute uh, for Mike Sheehan. And um, that's what's in the works right now for me, for our Patreon customers. Very good. Jason, you have a last word before we sign off and say goodbye to everybody? Yeah, that's that, like I said, um, just everybody, uh, Everybody who's pro law enforcement, you know, just understand that, you know, not every cop is bad. Obviously, there's going to be a few bad apples in the bunch, but um, what our organization, mine and Tatiana's, we want to we want to try to fund the police for better training, for for better police community relations. How we how we used to do it back in the days, um, but just just you know, basically show respect for the police. If you have food or you want to bring food to your precinct, you know, help sh show them that, that you guys care, that the community still 
cares about the police because it, those are the guys on, the, on the, the guys and the girls on the street that are, you know, taking the brunt of all this anti-police sentiment. And hopefully this can be changed by, by November 3rd, at least with the new election, with the election. So. I think that there are a lot of people out there that really do care about the police. Right. And if anybody, right. And if anybody has any questions for us, standing up for NYC at gmail.com, you can send us an email and, and uh, you know, we, we, we've actually reached out, other people from other states have reached out to us because of our back to blue rally saying, hey, how can we, how can we do that in our city, in our state, which is great. So we're spreading the word out there. It's great. Get out there, support your local law enforcement, you know, even if it's waving at them, even if it's bringing them food or water or something, you know, and yeah. it doesn't matter, not just New York City, the whole country needs it. The next round, you have to make it, let us know. Yeah, absolutely. I'll definitely send you guys an email. I'll, I'll so let we, you guys. You know, we can promote it on our end too. Absolutely. That's it's very the important. Service that you're doing there. Absolutely. Um, yeah, and I'm not even kidding, man. Next time you're gonna go to Atlantic City, let us know. We could do a satellite version over there. <laughs> well, I'm I'm testing it out right now. Like I said, this is my first time back since February, so I'm gonna see how it is. Let me see how how weird it is gambling with a mask. Thanks for coming. Hit me. What? Hit me. <laughs> no, I didn't say hit me. I said. <laughs> Thank you for joining us tonight. Thank Jay. you for having me, guys. I appreciate it. God you. bless. And, and, uh, and have a great holiday weekend, weekend, Labor Day. Let's let's you know. Let's... Yeah, you, man. Whatever you need, let us know. And we'll we'll promote it on our end. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you so much. All right.